Hey everybody, welcome to the Church Brand Guide Podcast. This is Michael Persaud, and today we are interviewing Keegan Walsh. I've known Keegan for quite a while. He's a very talented media designer and has been working in the church world for as long as I have known him. And to, I thought it would be an interesting interview today to bring him on our podcast because Keegan wears a couple of different hats. He is a student pastor at his church, and he also does media. So uh, what I've found is there's a lot of uh, media people, people that do media within the church, that also wear a different hat. So they have to balance uh, a lot of different things and get a lot of things done during the course of their week. Keegan talks with us um, on some tips and tricks that he uses to get a lot done at a high level. He's uh, very good at what he does, and he shares some of the secrets that he has to, to get a lot of great things done within the church, within media, as well as doing his, uh, his student ministry uh, responsibilities. He focuses more on the media side of things because that's what we're talking about on this podcast. And also, Keegan shares with us some of the most effective things that they do as a church to see growth take place. It's, uh, it's about building their brand in that community and doing it in such a way that allows people to want to be a part of what they're doing. And Keegan shares some of the most effective things that he does and helps the church do in, in, that, in that community uh, up in the Chicago area. So let's get started with our interview today and welcome Keegan Walsh. Hey, Michael. Thanks. Hey, Keegan. Great to have you on. Can you give us a little bit of an introduction of what you do right now with your church? Okay. Yeah, I'm on staff at a local church here in the Chicago suburbs, and uh, I came on staff as a student pastor, um, and I'm also over our media department. So anything from um, print design to web design and uh, our, our videos as well, video production that we do. So kind of all around media uh, comes under me, and uh, I'm, I'm mainly the main one producing that as well. So you're working with students, and you're doing media. Can you share how that all came around to where now you're doing both of those things? Uh, right. Well, I came on as a student pastor, um, but uh, them noticing the talents that I had and the abilities that I had, um, they quickly uh, t- took advantage of, of the things that I could produce. And um, when I came on staff, uh, they didn't have a, a good website at all. It was pretty outdated. The, they were in transition on their branding of their logo and all that. And um, they were kind of stuck because they were using some volunteers to do it. And I guess there was a little bit of... Uh, they couldn't come to an agreement with the volunteers and what the best logo would be. And so I kind of stepped in and uh, created a logo and all of that. And so through that... Um, They've seen the advantage of uh, having me over that area and how I'm able to produce uh, a, a clear brand for our church. So what's your background with creating media? Yeah, um, I, I haven't had uh, any formal training uh, necessarily, um, but uh, had, I started dabbling in uh, graphic design when I was a teenager, um, I don't know, probably as early as 13, 14 um, but just kind of taught myself uh, graphic design, the use of all the programs, and um, really have just been uh, studying those things, but also uh, videos as well, producing videos and uh, web design. So all those things, um, been doing those for, I, I did those as a teenager for a church, um, and then uh, as I went away to college, kind of used that as a uh, uh, a way to provide for myself during college, and now as a, a student pastor, um, it's a part of what I do at the church. How have you helped your church establish a brand? What was your starting point, and how did you move it forward from there? Yeah, um, we we developed the logo kind of right off the bat when I first came, um, and you know started putting it everywhere. Um, uh, just rebranding. I mean, trying to get rid of the old and bringing in the new. Um, but just tried to give it a fresh new look. Uh, the The look that they had and brand that they had before was pretty outdated and and made the church seem like it was out of touch with uh, our current community and where, where we're at. And so um, the logo was a start, and then we went with uh, a website um, and incorporated um, 
you know, all the different pieces of the ministry and try to just have a clear communication piece where people could find us online. Um, because you, online is what we've found to see that that's, that's where most people find us as a church. You know, they Google church in, in, in our area and that's what they're, they're looking for and they're investigating that. And so we wanted to give a good presence there. Um, and then uh, from there, we've done some things that have uh, really branded our message series. Um, our church has a brand, but we also, each and every month or every two months, we have a new message series that we're really getting behind and wanting our people to uh, remember the big idea. And so we uh, put together a bulletin piece that is full color, um, that matches the slides that our, our pastoral team uses. And also um, our stage design is, is all incorporated into that message series so that people don't forget uh, what we're talking about and the direction that we're headed. So you worked first with the logo and then you developed the website and then you focused on sermon series. So it sounds like right. a great path. If you were going to start to establish a brand, that sounds like a great starting point. It has a lot of different uh, avenues to, to reach outward uh, from, those, from right. those three areas. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'd agree. As we've seen it uh, make a big impact. I mean, um, you know, people are drawn into uh, what they're seeing in the bulletin or they're seeing on stage, and it just it, it, it really helps. Now that you've had some time to establish things, how would you describe your church's brand? Um, well, I would say um, our church's brand, uh, you know, we like to be creative with things, but our church is... Uh, been around for a while. We're not uh, a new church in the area. We have uh, people who've been around our church since uh, since the beginning. Um, our church has moved locations and as it's grown, um, but I think our church is sixty plus years old, maybe maybe hitting seventy something like that. And so we have people in our church who've uh, been around for a long time, and um, so we have to kind of uh, live in that balance of of pushing the edge of of wanting to reach a younger generation um, and and uh, relate to them, but also to have a clean and crisp look that uh, that the older generation can appreciate and uh, tie into as well. So, is there anything specifically you can share that you've done to help bridge the gap between the younger and the older generation? Um, I would say we just kind of keep that in mind when when creating pieces. I I think it's kind of a um, at our church, I think it's a healthy, uh, healthy accountability um, by by our, uh, you know, we have people on our board that we meet with and talk about our ideas um, that are in that age group, and then we also have younger in that same board, and so, um, you know, there's this healthy accountability. I know in some churches it may not be so healthy. Um, it may be a lot of criticism when you try to push the envelope, but. Um, I think our our church, our, our people, uh, I would say, trust us. And so when we're pushing that edge, you know, you might get a little bit of kickback here and there from uh, people saying, oh, you know, what's what's with that? You know, but um, but they appreciate our creative touch and, and trying to do what we can to effectively communicate the, the gospel message. And so I think there's there's kind of that relational accountability that happens for us. And so we're always thinking of that, you know, is this, is this too far? Is this going to turn people off? Um, or is this actually going to get the point across that we're, we're trying to make? That's great. W one of the things that we found is if we created a style guide that identifies what uh, some rules are that we can play within, then we can, we can, we can be, be playful, but then we can also honor what's already been established so that, both generations, the younger and the older, are able to connect with what we're doing. I was sorry. I would just add also that you know I think a lot of it boils down to leadership. Um, I think uh, with our 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 uh, lead pastor, he's really great at kind of cushioning the blow, so to speak, for the older generation. And so when we are pressing the envelope, um, we get a little more leeway because he's able to lead them in the direction of understanding why we're doing it. Uh, what's the point behind it? And also just to to let them know that he notices. Sometimes uh, the older generation just wants to know that somebody notices what they're noticing, uh, that it's different, that it might be uh, a little bit more on the edge than they're used to. Um, so I think leadership of the pastoral team, the staff, uh, is a big deal. And being able to push the envelope and be creative 
and have your church be excited about it rather than upset. Those are some great thoughts about a, a healthy tension, really, that many churches have that, that have been around for a few years. What do you enjoy the most about being on a church staff? I mean, you're, you're really a talented guy that could probably work at an agency somewhere creating media um, for all kinds of places. But what do you enjoy most about staying on a church staff? Because you've been there as long as I've known you. You've always been on a, on a church staff doing a ministry and also doing that in a very creative way with media. Yeah, I think um, maybe I'm a little spoiled in the place that I'm at because I, I do a lot of church media. Um, and so I'm kind of used to uh, the mission behind it. Um, but as I think about it, you know, the obviously um, for those of us in the church world, uh, we're, we've, we've got the greatest message, you know, and I think that... Um, that being able to use our talents and abilities to push that message and and really help people to see clearly what the true message um, of, of Jesus Christ is is a big deal. And so um, we're really handling that message. I mean, you you can you know through maybe a baptism uh, testimony, we do those. Um, you know, those times are are you're you're handling a, someone's life story. You're handling someone's um, conversion, you know, finding Christ, it's, it's a big deal. And so I think I really enjoy those moments of when it, it becomes real, you know, when it's, uh, it's making an impact, not just in somebody saying, Hey, you know, that looks cool. Um, but it's actually making a difference in the lives of people. I think that's huge. I agree with you. It's so meaningful to be doing church work because it's, uh, it's life changing. It's life giving. And uh, we, we work with a software company, and then the next day we might work with a church. And it's just so much more rewarding working with churches. Keegan, you are a student pastor as well as the media director for your church. So you have a lot going on. And on church staff, there is just a lot happening um, no matter what position <laughs> yeah. you're in. There's just a lot that happens within church staff. So can you share with us some tips that help you get a lot done when it comes right. to producing great media? Yeah, um, I've had to learn how to, um, even though I, I could uh, just go straight from scratch and create something um, for our church, a lot of times I like to use shortcuts, but shortcuts that I believe still keep the quality that we're looking for. Um, and so I've had to do a lot of searching and finding resources. I know there's a lot of great church resources out there. Um, that are free, and I think um, that's a great place to start, that if you want to save time um, and you don't have a whole lot of money, uh, there are a lot of great free church resources out there. Um, one of those that we use a lot is from Church on the Move in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, if you haven't found out about them yet, uh, you're missing out on probably the best church resource, I feel, um, for, for this type of work. Um, but it's called Seeds. The website's called Seeds, and it's seeds.churchonthemove.com. Um, if you visit that website, you can uh, get your get a free login, and they have um, they have the, the, one of the best things I think is they have uh, background music for videos that you can use that are really helpful because they have no no lyrics. Um, they have uh, other videos that you can just straight use. Um, they have uh, graphics and all that type of things that can really help. So that's one resource that, uh, that I've used uh, as well as some other ones. But if, if, if I'd say one of the big game changers for me um, in the last five or so years that I've been working at the church that I'm at now, um, to be able to save time and maybe spend a little bit of money, um, but really inexpensively for what you get, is uh, uh, a network called Envato that I've found online. So if you searched Envato, uh, you'd find these uh, network of websites that uh, are anything from background music like I talked about uh, to photos, but also graphic files. Um, not only graphic files, but uh, video files like uh, After Effects files and templates that you can use um, and really make what you need to make. It gives you basically a, a, a starting point and then you add your information. You probably have to tweak it to some extent. Uh, to fit what you you have going on, but uh, those websites have really made a big difference in uh, the time that I spend and also the quality of work that I'm able to put out. 
knowing where to go to get resources uh, that'll get you further faster is a game changer on a on a being on staff with a church. There's there's just always a lot going on. Right. Can you um can you speak to the idea of being able to design for multiple uh, departments? Because there's different looks that you know are required from a kids ministry thing to maybe something that's like a men's ministry thing. It's a different feel that you have to to, to come up with with design or um, anything else you produce media wise. Can you explain how you do that? Right. Yeah. Um, I, when it comes to what I do, um, I'm, I'm kind of limit, like I said, you know, limited on time. So they, I, I'm used in a, a lot of higher priority things, so to speak, not that other ministries aren't, but more of our main, um, all church, uh, type events and things like that is really when we push, push forward and do, do a lot of that, those things. But when I, uh, do create a flyer that includes, um, you know, we've we've had a, a summer event that uh, we put on, and we've created flyers that have, you know, our our community or our small group ministry maybe highlighted. It has our youth ministry highlighted, and also our kids ministry highlighted. Um, we just like to keep in mind the audience, the people that are going to be uh, receiving the the flyer, the design. And just try to keep that in mind that uh, who's going to be seeing it. Uh, when I designed for the youth ministry, uh, I'm able to just kind of pull out all the stops and uh, make it as uh, as interesting as, as I can to drag uh, grab their attention. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a difference when you're designing or creating for the different ministries in the church. One of the keys to creating a brand is even uh, even though you might be designing for different ministries uh, within the church, you if you have a brand guide in place that, that creates some rules, uh, maybe establishes fonts, colors, types of treatment, what type of photography you use, uh, you can design different looks for different ministries, but then there's always going to be this underlying core value that you, that people can, can connect with as being part of your brand. So a brand guide really helps you... Um, as you're designing multiple things for different ministries that might have a different feel to it, but it still has a cohesiveness and works together because you've got these rules established as part of a band, uh, as part of a brand guide. What is the one thing that you do with your church that gets the most response from people? Um, as far as uh, creating uh, like a design or a video, I think uh, I think videos are really impactful. Um, like I mentioned before, the baptism videos uh, have really been impactful for people. It's It, it can be um, intimidating to some to share their story in front of a camera, but uh, I don't think we've had one yet who's declined. Um, they, they come through, and usually what happens is that um, you have someone sharing their story in a way that's so impactful that they're in tears. They're, they're, the audience is drawn to tears because of real life change that's happening because of real life experiences that they're able to share. And so, um, I would say anytime you can tell someone's story or the story of your church, um, that's got to be the biggest win. Yeah, we found the same thing that when we tell stories, people respond to st- to stories. They love seeing other people share what God has done in their lives, and it really makes an impact. Do you have a system that helps you to tell stories that uh, right. allows you to do these baptism videos and p- produce these stories? Yeah, so it's kind of a, an automatic way for us to to share someone's story, and it it's in place of maybe... Um, you know, we're able to edit, we're able to, um, take one, someone who's, who, who could talk a lot and make sure that their story is a little more clear and, and concise. Or we're able to take someone who would be really nervous speaking in front of someone on stage and, and help them through it step by step so that they're able to communicate well. Um, and so, uh, the, the process of getting there, we have a, a baptism class that we do um, where we talk about them sharing their story. We help them through some questions that we give them. Um, and then we uh, we basically uh, schedule them out to be filmed about a couple weeks before the baptism service. And then on the day of the baptism service, we will show their uh, two to three minute, maybe four minute uh, video before they're baptized. So if we have five people being baptized in a service, um, might take up a, a lot of time in our service, but we feel that it's so important that 
Uh, we show the video, we baptize them, they're able to share their story. And the cool part is, is that we're able to give that video to them and post it online as well. And so they're able to share it with friends and family who are maybe out of town or uh, wouldn't come to the church to watch them be baptized. Um, really, we feel the, the most important part about baptism is sharing the story of, of them finding Christ. And so uh, that's a big deal to us. So I think it's a, a huge benefit that they can post it online. So you have a baptism class, and then after the class, that person has to schedule an interview um, on video. So what does this video interview look like? Yeah, we just did this this week. Um, we've got quite a few baptisms coming up, and so it's fresh on my mind. But basically, um, we set up a, a little, uh, now we do it in our sanctuary. Um, we have the sanctuary dark, and we have uh, some lights that we use, and we've got quite a bit of nice equipment that helps us out. But no matter how you do it, um, Basically, uh, we have them talking to one of our pastors. Usually, it's our, our lead pastor who will, he likes to be involved in this. And so he'll uh, stand kind of off to the side. And so the person is, is framed in such a way that they're not looking directly at the camera, but they're talking to our lead pastor. And we basically tell them, hey, uh, when you answer the question, just kind of restate the question in your answer so that uh, we can edit out the person asking the question. And so that way, it's just a natural way of teeing them up so that they're not as nervous, but also helping them process through their story and get through the questions that we ask to help them through that and uh, to do it in a clean way that it's not like a formal interview, but they're just sharing their story and we, we edit that together. So the final video ends up being about four minutes long. Is that right? Yeah, um, I mean, I think that's the goal. Sometimes they go longer. Um, you know, some people like to talk more than others, um, but we try to keep it that way just so that we can present it in our services in a way that's not going to um, throw us off and, and take away from the other baptisms that are happening. A video like this seems to have a, a great amount of value. Um, so maybe if you're watching that video and you served anywhere in the church, you could feel a sense of a win that has taken place because of your right. efforts. So it seems like everybody can be a part of the victory when, whenever you take the time, a church takes the time to put together a story like this so that other people can see how their efforts are making an impact, whether it's giving of their time or, uh, or maybe mentoring someone mm -hmm. or maybe giving uh, offerings and tithes. Um, it seems like everybody gets to share. Right, and one of the questions we ask um, is who has helped you on your spiritual journey? And uh, usually that brings up either a small group leader for our students or it brings up mom and dad for some of the, the younger kids that are being baptized. Or for our adults, it may be um, maybe they're maybe uh, you know they're a, a grandparent when they were a kid, or maybe even sharing about their small group experience. Like, hey, in small group, I I just was learning so much, or I was connecting with these people, and they've really helped me in my spiritual journey. And so it's it's a it's a good way to kind of give every everybody who deserves it, so to, I, I guess a, a pat on the back to say, look, you've been a part of this person's spiritual journey. And uh, that's a, that, that makes a big difference. So as one of the last things we'll talk about on our episode today, can you speak towards getting things done? There's just a lot that happens on church staff, and it's very important that you have something in place that helps you to accomplish as much as possible. Can you share what you do? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you took it that direction, because uh, more recently um, we've tried our best uh, to get everybody on uh, kind of like a, a, a community to-do list. Um, there's this uh, website that uh, one of our pastors grabbed hold of called As Asana. Um, I think it's A-S-A-N-A. -A. Um, but basically, it's a, a place where we can um, list all the to-dos and things that we need to make happen, but we can also schedule out. Um, one of the biggest challenges with media is obviously the turnaround time. Uh, the faster the turnaround time, probably the lower the quality, uh, the less volunteers that you can have a part of it, and the more difficult it can be to produce what you're wanting to produce. And so as much lead time as you can get, the better. And so what we've kind of set up for our, um, our 
uh, small group or our, our message series is that we are putting together videos for our small groups uh, um, as well as branding and all that and so we, we're almost uh, looking like uh, at least two months out to say okay we're gonna start on this two months out so we're gonna we're gonna start filming on this week and then we're gonna have a couple weeks to edit things down we're gonna have time to produce a DVD if we're gonna put that in the hands of our people um, and I can tell you that as the media guy, that's a huge benefit because I can do more when it's scheduled out because then I'm not doing things last minute. I'm not scrambling for help. Um, I'm not unclear of what needs to be done and, and those things and all that can really waste time. And so when it's planned, when it's planned out ahead of time, it makes a huge difference. And we've seen that happen that we, uh, did a lot. Uh, one series we put together, even a a, a book, um, a book for our our people to go through like a, a thirty day devotional. And I designed the book. I designed designed the cover. Had it printed. Uh, we had a DVD for all our small groups. We had the the stage design, the graphics for the bullets, and the graphics for the slides. All of that. And to be honest, it was probably one of the easiest uh, things we've done because we were months ahead. And so things were done well in advance and uh, gave us time for the unexpected and gave us time to actually put together a great product. That's really great information. So you use Asana to help you schedule and plan things out. Um, how do you handle media requests from different ministries? Uh, we we talk about the requests uh, in a meeting, you know, what's happening, what's going on, oh, we need this, we need that. Um, and then it gets put on to Asana, along with other things. So we're not just using it for media, but also other big events that we are planning, um, different things that need to be done. Um, but it's it's accountability, too, you know. it's there's uh, It's something everybody can see. Um, there's due dates and people are more encouraged to get their part of the project done, which a lot of times for media people in a church, uh, you're waiting on information, you're waiting on vision, you're waiting on uh, the title, uh, maybe if, you, if you're not a part of that creation process. And so um, it's good to have accountability there that people know, oh, I need to get that to them because they need it by this date and that's when the due date is. And so... Uh, yeah, so that's we. It's definitely been a big benefit to us. So Keegan's talking about a tool called Asana, and uh, we've also used a tool called Trello, which is free. Is Asana free, Keegan? Uh, the entry level, I think, is free or or pretty cheap. I think if you if you had a big organization, which you know most churches would fit on, under the smaller level there, uh, it's it's not it, it, there's not a big expense there. So Asana is a free-to-no-cost system, and uh, anybody in a media department would greatly appreciate um, having a system in place that allows them to keep on track and stay ahead of the game, really. Because if you could stay ahead, that's, uh, man, you could do some pretty amazing work. This idea of working ahead is probably one of the biggest things that we can share um, in all of our episodes of our podcasts, uh, because you could do some amazing things, even with limited resources, if you have a system in place and a mentality in place that you're going to work ahead and uh, you're, going to, you're going to have people that will allow you to do that, um, that are working with you as part of your team, it's, uh, it's amazing what can be accomplished. And uh, it's just a, such an important thing. We'll revisit this point um, over and over again as we keep on going in the episodes of the, uh, the podcast itself. Keegan, thank you so much for sharing with us today all the different things that you shared with us. And uh, I look forward to having you back on at some point. Thanks again, and uh, hey man, have a great, great day. All right, talk to you later. So that was Keegan Walsh, and he shared a lot of really good things on that interview. I think um, one of the big things I, w I hope to um, accomplish through interviewing Keegan is just showing what a uh, church staff position looks like for someone that's doing a, um, a media, uh, creating media, but then he's also doing other things. There's other responsibilities that he has and uh, just being able to get a bit of insight to his world, I think, is the, the value that I hope will be taken away from this, uh, this episode. He shared a couple of resources that I just wanted to make mention of one more time. Um, Asana.com is the, uh, the website for the, the software that he uses to help manage his, uh, his workload. Uh, we also talked about Trello, uh, Trello.com. 
you can check that out too. It's very easy to use. And uh, another resource I want to share with you is a book called Creativity Inc. It's the story of Pixar and how they kind of came together and developed this brand that we now know and love as Pixar. We can learn a lot from other companies uh, that are outside the church world about how they've established a brand and like where where they went with their strengths and how they avoided their weaknesses and established this really amazing product that we uh, we all enjoy. So it's great to to take a closer look at some things that we all might know, um, but maybe don't know the the ins and outs of how it came to be. So that way we can we can be encouraged in our process. And also we can also uh, and also we could see where where things can go potentially if we get if we get things right and lined up properly. So it was a great book for me, a lot of fun to read about. They talked a lot about the um, breakdown of some of the classics that they've produced, uh, Toy Stories and Finding Nemo, and uh, different just the different movies that we um, we've probably all seen. So. It's a fun read. Uh, take a look at it. Gives a lot of insight into the company as well. I'd also like to ask that you go to iTunes and subscribe if you haven't done that to the podcast. And uh, if you haven't done it, please rate us on iTunes and leave a comment. I'd love to read your comment, positive or negative. I just really would like the feedback. So as we're early on here in the the production of these podcasts, uh, we can make them better. So that's our goal. You can also visit our website, thechurchbrandguide.com, to find more resources. We've got a great resource out there on how to tell a great story. It's a structure that if you follow it, it'll let you put together great, great stories. Thanks again for joining us on this episode. We'll see you next time.